From start to finish, vaccine development usually is a very lengthy process, um, usually starting with some basic science experiments, animal studies, and then human studies. And so that entire process from start to finish uh, it takes several years, uh, many times up to a decade by the time that you add in the clinical trials and then the vaccine production to get the vaccine out to everybody that needs it. Before you do studies in people, you have to look to make sure that it's safe to take it all. Um, so there's generally animal studies that again, look at safety signals, also look at what dose is tolerable. Um, and then there's also the basic science. Does this vaccine or medicine really accomplish something that's gonna be helpful to go through all of these studies? When people talk about trials for vaccines and medications in, in people, uh, there's generally three phases that people talk about. Phase one studies, and phase one studies are very small numbers. That's where you take healthy volunteers, usually just a few dozen, maybe 20 to 50 people, and you give different doses of either a vaccine or medication to make sure that it's safe, that people don't have a lot of side effects, and at what dose you start to see some of those side effects, that you have a good idea of what dose is safe to take. Phase two studies is the next step if you pass through phase one successfully. And some vaccine candidates or medicines don't make it out of phase one. In phase two, the numbers get a little bit larger. And there you may have up to a few, couple hundred of people. And generally, these are not healthy people, but people that have the condition that you're interested in studying. So in this case, we're talking about COVID vaccines. You're looking at people that may have had COVID. Um, you give them the vaccine, and then you look to see how effective is the vaccine or the medication. And again, you're studying that safety signal. Are they having any side effects? And these studies, because they have more people, take a longer time period than the phase one studies. Then the last phase, and the phase that we're talking about a lot in the news right now, are phase three studies. Phase three studies are really important. Phase th three studies, you're also looking at people that have the disease that you're interested in studying, so not just healthy volunteers like we talked about in phase one. And you're giving larger numbers of people, either the vaccine or the medicine that you're interested in studying. And so this time you're talking about hundreds to thousands of people and you're not only comparing the vaccine, but you're also looking at a comparator. So either a placebo or something that's not the vaccine or the medicine that you're studying. Because you really want to study closely how effective is the vaccine and how safe is it. And if you compare it against something else, you have a better sense of how safe it is to give that medicine or vaccine. Phase three trials are extremely important because that's where we have the highest number of people that we're studying with a vaccine to make sure that, again, that it's effective, but also that it's safe, that there are no safety signals that we need to be concerned about, that we're not seeing a trend and some sort of side effect. The other part about a phase three that's really important is they have a comparator, and it's blinded to the people that are receiving it and giving the vaccine. So you don't know if you're giving the kind of mox vaccine or placebo versus the real vaccine. And so that makes sure that you're really looking at side effects, because if it's the same side effect in both groups, that's something you probably don't need to worry about. But if you're seeing a side effect in the vaccine arm that you're not seeing in the, the mock arm or the placebo arm, then that's something that you need to study more before you start giving it to larger groups of people. If we rush a vaccine, if we don't take the normal process of going through these phase one through phase three trials, what you worry about is that you may have something that looks good in a lab experiment, but you're not sure how effective it is in people. And further confounding that or complicating that is you don't know how safe it is either. And so you always want the benefits to outweigh the risk of any medicine or vaccine. And so if we don't go through the standard process, we may see something that we think is effective and that looks apparently safe, but without larger numbers of people, we may not understand some of the th problems that it might have that might come along with it, some complications or side effects that people could experience. Realistically, I think the best predictions are probably at the end of 2020, so December timeframe, but more likely early 2021. And that allows for enough time, not only for the studies to complete, but for people to do a good analysis of the information. So it's one thing for giving the medicine in the phase three trial, but then you need to have enough time to follow people afterwards to make sure that they don't have any side effects. And then all of that data is recorded, but then you need to go back through that information and compare the group that got the vaccine compared to the group that got the placebo. And again, look very closely to make sure there's no concerns for any side effects that could cause problems. There's two different things that we look at with vaccines. So one, it pr protects the person that receives it. Um, and that's really important, obviously. But from a population standpoint, we do need a certain number of people 
to get the vaccine, to get to, to the so-called herd immunity that's been discussed a lot in the last several months. Um, so there's herd immunity that comes along from people acquiring the disease and going through the disease process, but we would prefer to get herd immunity by enough people getting vaccinated that they have antibodies to protect themselves from getting infection. And that's really important to protect. There are some people, even if we have an extremely effective and safe vaccine, that won't be candidates because their immune system won't respond well to it. And so they can't get the vaccine. And we need, they count on herd immunity, enough other people being protected from infection that they're not going to get infected themselves. And so we do need a certain amount of people, probably at least 50% of people, 60% of people to have some protection for that herd immunity to protect people that can't get the vaccine. We will need to continue the mask and the physical distancing to keep people safe, even after we get the results of these phase three trials for the vaccine. So in addition to getting the information about the safety and the, eff the effectiveness of these vaccines, vaccine production is occurring. Right now, they've actually compressed that during the phase three trials. Usually that happens afterwards, but in an effort to speed up this process, they're producing vaccine right now. So that if the data comes out from the trial showing it's effective and safe, there'll be vaccine product available. However, that product still has to be delivered to all of the areas where people need vaccine. And we're talking about a large scale, huge numbers of people, right? There's a large global population of people that needs the vaccine. So on that type of scale, it will take months to deliver and administer vaccine to all the people that be qualified to receive it to help keep people protected. There have been a lot of comparisons with this COVID-19 pandemic that we're experiencing in 2020, and then the 1918 pandemic flu, which is often called the Spanish flu. In the United States alone, there were 675,000 deaths in 1918 from that flu. And if you look at that percentage of population at that time, that would be about the approximate 2, 2 million people dying from flu in current population numbers. So huge impact on the United States. One of the, so there's similarities because that was also a pandemic. It infected the, the whole global community. There were a lot of deaths. Um, but some differences that are important with that flu pandemic back in 1918, they didn't have any treatments. They didn't even know the virus that was responsible until 15 years later. Uh, there was no vaccine available. With COVID-19 in 2020, the whole sequence of this virus was known within a few weeks of knowing about this disease process, which is really remarkable. And that allowed scientists to get a head start. We do have effective treatments for people that are hospitalized with COVID-19. And these vaccine trials, while they're still underway, are moving pretty quickly. And we hope to have a vaccine available by the end of this year, which is really remarkable if you compare that to the 1918 pandemic flu. Some other similarities that we saw with 1918 pandemic flu and, and COVID-19, uh, there were differences in how people approached the 1918 pandemic flu. There were some communities that continued to have mass gatherings and parades and other communities that had more social distancing and the communities that had more mass events had more cases of flu and more deaths. And so I think we've seen some of that in 2020 with this COVID-19 pandemic as well, that the physical distancing and the wearing the mask is a really effective tool. Unfortunately, we've been using that while we've been developing medications for treatment and also while we're waiting for the results of these vaccine trials. The tools that we're using are effective. And I think if we look at those lessons from the 1918 pandemic flu, we've managed to stem some of the, the deaths that they, they saw back in 1918, which is good. But we need to be consistent and not get complacent with the physical distancing and masking. And when the vaccine's available, we need to take advantage of that. If we see that it's effective and safe, really we need to encourage everybody to take it so that we can protect as many people as possible.